From New York City, Chapter 9 in the Chronicles of River's End. The star of the show, Gene Herschel, in his greatest of all roles. The title of the show, Dr. Christian. The sponsor of the show, the Cheesebro Manufacturing Company. Owners of the trademark, Vaseline. Gene Herschel, Hollywood star, now in New York to attend the world premiere of the new 20th Century Fox picture in Old Chicago at the Astor Theater on January 6th brings you this afternoon another delightful story of Paul Christian, the doctor of River's End, under the sponsorship of the makers of Vaseline Preparations. All products bearing the trademark Vaseline are the best of their kind that can be produced, manufactured with scrupulous care and therefore harmless and safe enough even for the children to use and inexpensive enough so that no household need be without their benefit. And now to our story of Dr. Christian. The scene is Dr. Christian's private office, and the time is a few minutes past six o'clock of a fine January evening. Judy Price is still in Hollywood, where she's spending the Christmas holidays, and Helen Carson is temporarily helping out in the doctor's office. Yes? Oh, come in, Helen. Busy? No, I was just reading the paper. Did you see this about the bandits who forced a man to drink knockout drops and then robbed him? Yes, I read it. Well, I think that's terrible. Ella Harris and Henry are outside. Ella Harris and Henry? Well, I haven't seen them since... Well, I guess it was last June. Didn't uh, Henry get the measles in June? Well, if he did, it was with Ella's permission. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't do anything without her. I never saw a man who amounted to less than Henry Harris. When he walks into an empty room, it's still empty. Oh, Henry's all right. He simply hasn't found himself. Well, maybe he isn't worth looking for. Oh, now, Helen, Henry Harris is a little bit meek and mild, but just the same, he's a man in a million. Yes, the last digit. Uh, shall I show them in? Yes, yes, of course. Well, you better put that newspaper away and look busy. <laughs> you may go in. Dr. Pitchin will see you right away. Well, hello there. Oh, how are you, Dr. Christian? I'm sorry we had to come so late in the day, but Henry was busy with some chores around the house. Yes, I was. And you know how a man is trying to do housework. Takes him hours to do what a woman can do in five minutes. Mm. By the time he was finished, it was almost six o'clock. Only half past five, Ella. Almost six, dear, I noticed particularly. Then we had to get the car out of the garage and drive over, and Henry's such a cautious driver. Well, I always So we got here so late that Henry didn't want to come in. But I say when a person isn't feeling well, he should see a doctor at once. So here we are. Sit down, Henry. Well, what seems to be the trouble, Mrs. Harris? Oh, nothing the matter with me. It's Henry. Tell Dr. Christian about it, darling. <laughs> well, doctor, it ain't much. Uh, you see, I... It's his nerves, Dr. Christian. Well, Henry doesn't seem like a man who'd be bothered with nerves. What makes you think that? Well, for the past three or four nights, he hasn't been able to sleep. And when he does manage to drop off, he talks and mutters and has dreams. Uh, tell Dr. Christian about that dream you had last night, Henry. Oh, Ella, I don't think that's important. Oh, but... yes, it is. Dreams are very important, don't they, Dr. Christian? Some psychologists say they are. There you are, Henry. Now go ahead. <clears throat> well, Doctor, it don't make sense, but I, I dreamed I was in some kind of danger, and, and then I seemed to have $10,000 in my hand. 5000 I... Henry. I... No, Ella, it was 10000 I'm sure it was 5000 dear. Now, Ella, this was my dream, and I say it was 10000 Why don't you compromise on 7500 <laughs> Well, it don't make any difference anyhow. Well, well, it seemed like I was running from somebody and holding the money in my hand, and, well, that's all there was to it. Oh, it was a sort of a nightmare. Yes, that's it, a nightmare. And the funny thing about it, he has the very same nightmare over and over again. He can't get a decent night's sleep at all. Well, are you worrying about anything, uh, are you, Henry? Well, I... Oh, I don't see what he'd have to worry about. Of course, he's been out of work for some time, but I still have the property Father left me, and it brings a very good income. Mm -hmm. How's your appetite, Henry? It's all right. Any trouble after eating? Anything to disagree with you? No, Henry eats like a horse. Well, do you feel out of sorts in any other way? No, I feel pretty good. Ah, then I'd forget about it. But, Doctor, why can't he sleep? Oh, everybody has a touch of insomnia now and then. It might be due to one of a dozen different things. Maybe he's a bit run down. If it keeps up, Henry, drop in and I'll prescribe a tonic for you. Like what you gave me last summer? Yes, that's it. Oh, that's the worst tasting stuff now, I ever... Now, Henry, Dr. Christian knows best. Well, we'd better be going, Doctor. Come on, Henry. I'd open the outside door for you. Helen's probably looked up and going home. 
No, seat still here. Just finishing this filing. Henry, where's your overcoat? I, I didn't wear it. I, I forgot it. It's hanging in the hall closet. Why, Henry, you ought to know better than that on a cold night like this. Uh, well, good night, Doctor. Good night, Henry. Uh, good night. Good night. Well? <laughs> It was Henry. Oh, of course. <laughs> he talks in his sleep. Well, he has to. It's the only chance he gets. this morning, the police force. Why don't you put on your overcoat? Afraid it'll cover your star? It's not my overcoat, and no wisecracks about my star. Where's Dr. Christian? In his private office. Well, I gotta see him right away on police department business. Uh, Dr. Christian's busy. Give me the ticket, and I'll see that he shows up and pays his fine as usual. It hasn't anything to do with parking his car in the wrong place this time. Well, what is it? That'll be something for the jury to decide. The jury? Yes, the jury. Now, you make it snappy. You tell Dr. Christian I want to see oh, him. Oh, well, just a minute. Dr. Christian? Yes? Uh, can you come out? I think we're being arrested. Well, hello, Amos. What's the matter? Dr. Christian, I've always been your friend, haven't I? Yes. But from now on, I can't afford to be anybody's friend. From now on, it won't be me talking. It'll be the law. Now, where were you last night between the hours of six and seven o'clock? Now, look here, Amos. I haven't got much time for a lot of foolishness. If you'll just tell me what you this want, This isn't I... foolishness. It's serious business, Dr. Christian. And you'll have to answer my questions. Well, all right. I was here in the office. In the office, huh? Now, how about you, Helen? In the office. Was somebody with you, or were you alone? Unless somebody was with me, I was alone. Yes, I see... Uh, what? Helen and I were here in the office together. Uh-huh. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh, no, we're still in the office. Now, now, Dr. Christian, did anyone come here to see you between 6 and 7 o'clock? Yes. Ella Harris and Henry were here. Mm-hmm. And what happened? Well, nothing. That is, nothing particular. Ella thought Henry wasn't feeling so well, so she brought him in. It seems Henry was having a nightmare. What kind of a nightmare? Oh, it was something about someone trying to take $10,000 away from him. That wasn't a nightmare. That was real. Real? What do you mean? Yes, real. Dr. Christian, you, Mrs. Harris, and Helen here might be the last people to have seen Henry Harris alive. What's alive? That? Well, you're not telling me he's... I don't know what's happened to him yet. Oh, where is he? Well, that's what I'm going to find out. Oh, but Henry wasn't sick. There wasn't anything the matter with oh, him. Who said anything about him being sick? He's been kidnapped. Maybe murdered. Oh, what are you talking about? Why would anyone want to kidnap Henry Harris? Why, for ransom, of course. Oh, but Henry hasn't got a nickel. Oh, no, but his wife is pretty well fixed. Oh, I know, And but if then... there's anybody in River's End who'd be a cinch to kidnap, it'd be Henry. But why do you think he's been kidnapped? Now, listen. I've got it all figured out. After Ella and Henry left here last night, they drove home. Ella got out of the car and went into the house. Then Henry took the car to the garage. Yes. In 15 or 20 minutes, when Henry didn't come into the house, Ella called him and then went out to the garage to look for him. He was gone. Oh, but that doesn't necessarily mean he was kidnapped. Now, wait a minute. In the pocket of his overcoat here, I found this. What is it? It's a letter mailed last week. Listen. Listen. Place ten grand in a cigar box and leave it in the corner of your garage before six o'clock Sunday evening. Fail us and we'll give you the works. Don't tell the cops about this or we'll get you anyway. Henry got that letter? Yes, sir, and has been carrying it around in his pocket for three or four days. Oh, it's incredible. Well, right now the main thing to do is to keep cool and, and wait. Wait for what? For Mrs. Harris to get a note demanding the ransom, of course. Now, Dr. Christian, I want you to do something for me. You know something about chemistry, don't you? Well, yes, in a way. Why? Because on the garage floor, I found a bottle with some kind of stuff in it. 
I got it here wrapped up in this newspaper. Can you analyze it and tell me what the stuff is? Well, I guess I could have it analyzed without arousing suspicion, if that's what you mean. All right, I'll leave it with you. But remember, and this goes for you too, Helen, mum's the word. We mustn't let a soul find out about this if it gets out. Dr. Christian's office. Uh, yes, yes, he is. It's for you, Amos. Oh, oh, uh, Hello? Oh, hello, Mrs. Harris. Yes, this is Amos Plum talking. What? What What they have? Great Scott. Amos, what is it? I can't stop to tell you now. I gotta get going. And what a spot for your announcer to break into the story. However, we'll make it snappy with the brief suggestion that a tube of Vaseline petroleum jelly is a handy thing to keep by you when you have a head cold. A small amount placed in each nostril will melt with the body heat and spread quickly and soothingly over the inflamed membranes, reducing the irritation, helping to make breathing easier, protecting the delicate lining of the nasal passages. A tube of Vaseline jelly is sterile and absolutely safe to use, even on a tiny baby's nose. Vaseline jelly in tubes and jars is obtainable at every drugstore for a few cents. And by the way, be sure when you purchase to look for the trademark Vaseline on the package. If you don't see it, you are not getting the genuine article. And now to get back to our story. The next scene again takes place in Dr. Christian's office, 24 hours after the River's End police force dashed out so unceremoniously. Look at this. Look at this. What? In last evening's newspapers. Headlines and everything. Huh. Has Dr. Paul Christian clue to Harry's kidnappers? But I thought you told the reporters you didn't know anything about well, it. Well, that's what I did tell them. And look at this picture. Dr. Paul Christian, the Sphinx of the Harry's case. Huh? Well, how did the newspapers ever get wind of it anyway? I don't know, but... The... Uh, Dr. Christian's office? Oh, just a moment. It's the Press Association calling long distance. They want to know if you'll speak. No! Uh, hello? Uh, no, Dr. Christian has nothing to say. No. Uh, no, I'm sorry. No! Amos, I've been trying to get you on the phone. How did the newspapers find out about this? Well, it, it sort of leaked out through Ella Harris's mother. Ella Harris' mother? <laughs> That's not a leak. That's a flood. <laughs> well, well, someone must have phoned the city papers. So as long as they found out about it anyway, I figured I might as well play ball with the boys. Well, did you see this candid camera picture of me? Oh, <laughs> sure. And take a look at that picture of me. <laughs> Isn't that a pip? Right on the front page, too. <laughs> well, but what happened yesterday, Amos, when you got that phone call and ran out of the office? Did you hear from the kidnappers? Oh, no. Th that was when the first reporter showed up. But don't you worry. I'll hear from those kidnappers sooner or later. Oh, sure. They'll at least send you a birthday card. <laughs> now, now, listen. I know what I'm about. I've got a surefire clue. I haven't given this out for publication yet. But I've got the revolver the crooks used. I'm having the registration number checked up right now. Well, where did you get it? The crooks left it at the scene of the crime. Ah, I can't imagine kidnappers walking away and leaving a revolver. Maybe it belonged to Henry. Oh, no. I've already investigated that angle. Ella says Henry never owned a gun in his life. It was knocked out of the kidnapper's hand during the struggle. Oh, there was a struggle. Why, certainly. I figured that out right away, on account of Henry's overcoat being all ripped and torn. Well, it's funny, Mrs. Harry, that the Harrys didn't hear the struggle. Well, she was in the front part of the house. Oh, no, I've got this case all worked out. Henry drives into the garage. These guys are waiting for him. As he gets out of the car, they grab him, and in the struggle, his overcoat is pulled off. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah, except for one little thing. What? Henry wasn't wearing an overcoat. Huh? That's right. I remember he told Ella he'd left it hanging in the hall closet. So how did the overcoat get into the garage? Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to figure that out. But as long as I've got the crook's revo... Oh, oh, say, were you able to analyze that stuff in the bottle? Yes, it was chloral. Knockout drops. Knockout drops, say. And another thing about that bottle that... Uh... 
Oh, hello, boys. Hello, Amos. Hello, Plum. Dr. Christian, I'm a reporter from the Courier. And I'm from the Journal, Dr. Christian. I'd like to get a statement. Well, if it's anything about the Harris case, I've anything to say. Did Harris have an inferiority complex? I don't know. But didn't you psychoanalyze him just before he was kidnapped? I'm not a psychoanalyst. He told you about his having a dream, didn't he? Well, yes. And didn't he tell you he had dreamed he had $10,000 in his hand and was running? Yes, that's what he told me. What psychological significance did that have? Why was he running with the $10,000? Well, maybe he wanted to put it in the bank before he woke up. (laughs) (laughs) Look, Dr. Christian, you were well acquainted with Harris. When he got that letter, why didn't he inform the police? Why didn't he tell Amos Plum here? Well, I suppose he figured he was having enough trouble. The letter warned him not to tell the police. Let me ask you something else, Doctor. I understand Harris was a man without a great deal of courage. Do you think he would put up such a stiff struggle that his overcoat would be torn off of him? I'll answer that question, boys. The overcoat hasn't anything to do with the case. I thought it was an important clue. Oh, no, that's just a lot of loose talk. If you'd have come to me, I could have told you different a long time ago. Harris didn't even put up a struggle. How do you know? He couldn't have because he was drugged. Drugged? Yes, sir. Those crooks forced him to drink knockout drops. Are you sure of that? Why, certainly. I've known it for days. Wait a minute. You remember that gang of crooks who staged a hold up by giving a man knockout drops? I know all about them. You don't think the Harris kidnappers are the same? Now, take it easy, boys. I don't want to be quoted on that just yet. But I'll tell you this much. I expect to have Henry Harris back home, safe and sound, within 24 hours. The phone will ring all day again today. Shall I answer it? Yeah, I guess you'll have to. But if it's any more reporters, then don't. Dr. Christian's office. Oh, uh, just a moment. It's Ella Harris. Oh, all right. Hello, Ella. Yes. Yes, I know. Oh, now don't cry, Ella. You <laughs> you've got to be brave. Oh, I wouldn't take that attitude. He may be perfectly safe. I know he'll be returned to you. Sure. Well, Amos Plum says he'll have him back very soon. Sure. Sure. (laughs) All right, Ella, goodbye. Helen. Yes, sir? I want you to run over to the Davis drugstore. When you get there, all right, Davis will give you a package. Bring it back. Yes, sir. Say that 113. This is Dr. Christian speaking. Is Roy Davis there? Oh, hello, Roy. Roy, I'm sending Helen over to get that package. You've got to be absolutely sure now, Roy. Yes, nine, six, three, six, two. A mistake in just one number might cost a man's life. Yes, that's the way I remembered it. Square, brown, and about six inches tall. And the day was Wednesday, the 9th of June, six months ago. All right, all right, thank you. Then, then I'll tell him. Thanks, Roy. Dr. Christian, they found him. They found Henry. Where? Where is he? Well, he's coming up the street with Amos Plum. Well, is he... Is he all right? He must be. He's walking, and there's a big crowd following him. There they are. Why, they're coming in here. Now, you stand back. Go on. Get back. Don't crowd him. How about my story? You'll get your story as soon as Dr. Christian examines him. Now, you stay outside, all of you. Henry! Uh, Hello, Doc. What happened to you? Well, that's that's a long story, Dr. Christian. But before he starts talking, I want you to look over him and, and see if he's been hurt badly. Oh, there's nothing wrong with me, except where the ropes cut my wrist. He's been tied up for two nights in that old empty boathouse down by the river. I'm kind of hungry, though. Oh, well, sit down right here, Henry. Uh. Helen, heat some milk and bring me a large glass of it. Steaming hot. Yes, sir. Slip off your coat, Henry. Well, I, I hate to boast, Dr. Christian, but I told you I'd have him back. Now, let's have a look at those wrists. Yeah. Are they pretty sore? Well, they're kind of sore. Took me all night to work my hands free. Uh, after that, untying my ankles was easy. Now, just start in at the beginning, Henry, and, and tell him the whole thing. Well, it was right after I left here, Doc. I, I took the car into the garage, and, and these two guys jumped me. Uh, one of them held a gun on me, but I knocked it out of his hands, see? What did I tell you? Uh, at the same time, I, I hit him a clip on the jaw, and th- then I grabbed the other one. Well, we wrestled all over the garage. 
But pretty quick, the first guy got on his feet again. He pulled a bottle out of his pocket and said... Here's your hot milk. Uh, Thank you, uh, Helen. There you are, Henry. Ah. Oh, say, that hits the spot. Go ahead, Henry. Well, this first guy pulls a bottle out of his pocket, then the two of them get me down and pour something out of the bottle into my mouth. Well, didn't you shout for help? Oh, I did then because I thought there was poison in me, but... The second I yelled, they threw a blanket or something over my head. That was your overcoat, Henry. Uh, I found it later. Didn't you tell me your overcoat was hanging in the hall uh, in the hall closet, uh, Henry? Yep. Uh, well, I I suppose they must have gone into the house first and found it. You see, Ella never does lock the door. What happened then? Well, I kept struggling for a while, and then my mind uh, just sort of went blank. Hold the glass in the other hand now while uh, I look at this one. And the next thing I knew, I, I was lying in that boathouse with my hands and feet tied and, and those two guys watching me. Mm-hmm. What kind of looking men were they? Well, the, the one called Butch was short and, and dark complected. And the, the one called uh, ba- Babyface was big. He's the guy I socked on the jaw. Uh, didn't you get their last names? No, no. They, they just called each other Butch and Babyface. And you know that gun, Dr. Christian. I thought I could check up on the number and find out who it belonged to. <coughs> What's the matter, Henry? That 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 milk got down the wrong throat. Oh. What about the gun? Oh, it was bought so long ago there there wasn't any record of it. Well, did they give you anything to eat? Oh yeah, we, we had some food, but it it ran out, and that, that's how I happened to get away. You see, I I've been working all night to get my hands loose. Well, this morning when Butch and Babyface went out to get something to eat, I I saw it was my chance, and I pulled the ropes off. I got. Hey, you oh, oh well, uh, yeah, yeah. wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, Mister Harris, hold that pose. Your arms around your wife. Wait, wait, wait! Till I put my coat on. Never mind the coat. Thanks, that's swell. Quiet, will you, old? Please be quiet. Say, Mister Harris, I'm from the Journal. Our readers would like a statement from you. Well, I'm sure glad to get back to my wife. Oh, Henry, darling. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. What else? And there's just one. thing thing I regret, that I didn't have a chance to give that other gangster a punch in the jaw. We will continue the story of Dr. Christian in just a moment. Meanwhile, we want you to meet some other members of Helen Carson's family. Her brother, Red, for example, and the brat sister, Emily. What are you doing, Red? Oh, just getting cleaned up. Go on out of here, will you, Emily? Play with your doll. Don't want to. Well, then read your book. I'd rather stay with you. Well, now, supposing I don't want you in here. Well, that's all right. What's that? Well, what's what? That stuff in the bottle that you're putting on your hair. Now, leave my things alone, will you? Vaseline hair tonic. A liquid... Three part extension for preserving and restoring the strength and beauty of the hair. Now put that down, you'll spill it. What do you put it on your hair for? To make it lay down. Why? For gosh sakes, don't ask so many questions. I know why you want to make your hair lay down. Well, if you know so much already. It's because Betty Brooks said she liked the way John Weston's hair always looked. Say, will you lay off? She likes the well-washed, well-groomed look in a man. Go on out of here. Scram. You could use a manicure. You know, Betty said that... Now, listen. You get out of here or I'll call Mom. Red's got a girl. Red's got a girl. Red's Go got a... Go Look out. Don't you touch me. Right. Get out of here. Red's got a girl. And so Emily has learned at an early age what easy marks we men are for the ladies. However, Vaseline hair tonic performs a much more important function for our hair than merely to make the hair look nice. It promotes scalp health, which is essential if you want to keep your hair. Each time you shampoo your hair, give the scalp a thorough workout with Vaseline hair tonic. Massage it till you feel the tingle of renewed circulation. Then shampoo, and when your hair is dry, again use a little of the tonic to smooth it into place. Vaseline hair tonic comes in 40 and 70 cent bottles. Enough in the 40-cent bottle to give you six to ten scalp treatments in addition to daily good grooming. And so we pick up Dr. Christian again. He is returning to his office after making his usual rounds. The time is the day after Henry Harris's unexpected return. Hello, Helen. 
Anything new? Oh, mercy. You came in the side door so quietly. I didn't hear you. <laughs> uh, yes, Henry Harris is outside in the waiting room. <laughs> Did you see his picture in the Chicago paper? Yes, it doesn't look any more like him than a jackrabbit. <laughs> well, have him come in. Yes, sir. Well, Henry, you seem to have become rather famous. Yeah. They've even printed your picture in the Chicago papers. Yes, as I've always said, Doc, you can't keep a good man down. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Where's Ella? Oh, she's at home doing her housework. Uh, you told me to drop in so as you could check up on me. I feel all right, though. Well, I don't think you're going to be any the worse for your experience. I hope <laughs> not. I'm going to work the first of next week. Got a job as night watchman in the lumber yard. Night watchman, eh? Yep. Well. Yeah, the, the lumber company said I was just the man for the job. A fellow who was kind of handy with his fists and could take care of himself. <laughs> Fine, <laughs> I, I see. Mm, uh, sit down, Henry. Hi. There's just one little thing I want to ask you, and then you can go. That uh, stuff the gangster gave you out of the bottle, it didn't have any bad after effects, did it? No. Well, I've been a little worried about that. You say the gangster took the bottle out of his pocket? Yep. Uh, well, I, I suppose they saw they couldn't handle me no other way, so they, they had to give me knockout drops. Yeah, yeah, I see. Hmm. Well, the only thing that puzzles me is whether the gangsters get the same bottle I gave you last June. Huh? What bottle? Well, it was the same bottle I gave you with that tonic in it. Oh, Doc, no, you must be mistaken. I wasn't. Oh, no, no, I'm not. I had the contents of that bottle analyzed, Henry. And I also noticed that the bottle looked familiar. Oh, yeah, but well, one bottle looks the same oh, as another. No, no, not exactly. Besides, although most of the label had been scraped off, there was still a portion stock on that bottle. And that portion of the label had a prescription number on it. One of my prescription numbers. Doc, w w wait a minute. So I checked it off and found out that it was the same bottle I'd given you. Listen, Doc, for Pete's sake, don't tell anybody that. It'll ruin me. Th that's what it'll do. It'll ruin me. Then you did frame up this whole kidnapping business yourself. Wrote yourself that letter and left the torn overcoat and the revolver where the police could find him. <laughs> Even tied your own hands to make rope marks. Yes. Yes, I, I did. I... I did, but keep, keep, Mom, Doc, D don't give me away. I, I, I had to do it. Everybody in this town thought I was no good. Thought I didn't have any backbone, and I was tied to Ella's apron strings. You won't say anything, will you? Promise me, Doc. Henry, I don't like lies. And this is a kind of a lie. Well, listen, Doc, I, you see, I got started wrong when I married Ella. She had money, and I didn't. Of course, that didn't make any difference to her, but it did to lots of people. And, well, pretty soon I wasn't Henry Harris anymore. I, I was just Ella's husband. And losing my job didn't help any either. Everybody thought I didn't want to work, that I was shiftless and no account. And, well, when everybody starts believing that about a man, why, he begins believing it himself. Don't you see, Doc? I had to do something desperate. I had to. Well, Henry, it's done now, and I suppose from an ethical standpoint, I shouldn't reveal the secrets of the patient. Besides, <laughs> it would make a joke of the Rivers End police force. Still, I Doc, don't know. If you'll I... just forget about that bottle. Just forget. Uh, I don't like to interrupt, Dr. Christian, but you're supposed to call at the Brent home at 10.30. Say, by golly, that's right. It slipped my mind entirely. <laughs> See how it is, Henry? I have a very poor memory. And so we conclude another Dr. Christian story, starring one of the greatest actors in the screen world, Gene Herschel, and presented for your enjoyment each Sunday afternoon by the makers of Vaseline Preparations. Prices of Vaseline products mentioned on this program apply only in the United States. Next week, Gene Herschel will bring you another interesting story of Paul Christian, the doctor of River's End. Gene Herschel appears on this program through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. This is Arthur Gilmore bidding you good afternoon for the makers of Vaseline Preparations. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>